All right, so I got my camera plugged in. It's charging. It's hooked up to the wall. So unfortunately, I'm not really going to be able to drag you guys around all that much, get close to the car and whatnot. So I'm going to leave you on my workbench, on the welding table, and just kind of zoom in and do the best I can. Do the best you can with what you have to work with. That's kind of the motto around here. So I got my firewall uh, just in place real quick with some self tappers pull this firewall out so like i said i can so i can relieve around the steering book column let's get some gain some clearance around the steering column all right i'm gonna start working on these outside edges where it comes down the wings on the front of the cowl i want to get these fitting a little better and then make a template and bring my wing out so i can get the driver's side all said and done I'm need to kind of make it a daily thing again like I had been. I know Allie was very appreciative of the fact that I took some time off working on the car to get some things done at her house. Alright, so I got my air compressor Everything all hooked up, ready to go. I'm going to drain it real quick. Appreciate it. I think what I'll do before I get everything finished and before it's welded into the car, I'll I'll throw this in my small. I got a sandblast cabinet in the basement of my garage here, and uh, I'll get this sandblasted and then get everything welded up and then hit it with epoxy. But for the time being, I just need to clean up the metal around this area here so I can get these spots welded. So I opened up this opening a little more than I needed to and the reason why is I just went to the bottom of this belt line, this little bead. So then I'll, what I'll do is my filler panel will go up and it'll be right at the bottom of that bead, right on the X. Now I can get this set in place, figure out where I need to add metal and then get this temp little piece templated and welded in. And then start working on the wing. Let's do that. I want the face of the firewall here to be vertical, which is, you know, the same as this surface here. Which that's that's it a boat right there. So that's what I'll have for clearance. So I have to fill this place space in right here. So it only needs to be about an inch wide. Probably try to find some type of a steering column grommet to fit in around the F1 column. But for the time being, I want to get this filled, and then uh, I don't want to go too crazy because I don't know if my pedals are going to interfere with this. I don't think they will. I think I have enough room in the car where I think the pedals are going to be set back a little bit. That I don't think they're going to interfere with the firewall at all. But I'll get this fi this uh, filler piece put in, templated, and then uh, get it tacked up and welded on. That piece in. I will work on this wing here and get that wing set up so I can get a template made for, for this filler piece. So I need to fill in this piece here and then coming up here on this edge here. Edge here. How's it go? Drop my earbud. Alright, let's, let's try that again. My camera died. Battery. As always, it's like a reoccurring theme that I have going on here. I'm working on the firewall still. I'm just trying to keep moving while my battery was charging. I got this filler piece here welded in. Template made. 
out of cardboard. I first made it out of masking tape, transferred it over to a thin cardboard, and then, well, it's like a, just a, like, almost like a thick paper stock. And then welded it in, left it a little long on the bottom. I haven't ground down the welds on the back yet, but it's 100% welded in, and, and I went a little over. I moved it closer to the steering column so I can then cut out the radius to, to match this side. I'll probably end up cutting this side a little bit more and running it straight down so it's just a little cleaner. And then I'll mimic this side to over here. Uh, that being said, next piece I'm going to work on is this piece, the wing template. This is that cardboard paper, that thin paper. That template goes here and that lines up to what's on the body. I have some masking tape down here on the bottom that mimics this lower piece where it, it bends in and out. But I had this all mocked up on the car so I know it should fit. So now what I need to do is transfer this over to my metal, which is right there behind me. The hoses everywhere, cords everywhere. All right, so I'm just gonna use a straight edge. I'm gonna leave it about a quarter of an inch longer on the bottom. And the reason I wanna do that is because there's some inner structure inside the wing on the side of the cowl. This template or this piece of metal is actually gonna come down the cowl and then it's gonna bump out a little bit and go around it. So I just wanna add a little bit of material on the bottom end to give myself enough material that I'll be able to go over that inner structure. So I'm just transferring this. I'm going to make sure I go around the masking tape. I'm going to go a little wide, about a quarter of an inch also. So you can see here what I need to do. So now I'm going to put this in my shear and get that cut off. Went to a horse show with my daughter three or four years ago and while we were waiting for her class I jumped on Craigslist and there was a guy that happened to be I think in the next town over from where we were at the horse show that had this for sale and I ended up making a quick trip to the guy's garage and I ended up I actually called him on a smaller jump shear and when I got there and saw this one I ended up buying this one because I think it was a hundred more dollars but I want to say the other the jump the other one was maybe 24 inches and this one was 37 for another hundred dollars it was a no-brainer so I try to do as much cutting on things like this like I said, where, where you have no dust. And I know not everybody has tools like this, but even a hand shear makes a big difference. When you're going from cutting uh, with cutoff wheels to, to doing things, like I said, with a shear. It just makes a big difference. Small little tool, it is heavy. <laughs> Solid steel. This is my rotary shear. Covered in dust because it's been sitting a while. You can make your adjustments depending on the thickness of material that you're cutting. This is pretty standard, I think, like most cutting tools. I think it'll probably go up to 16 or 18 gauge. And don't quote me on that, but I think it's somewhere along those lines. What I usually do is just throw a bolt through one of the holes in my table. Snug it down and that usually, wait a minute, I put it on backwards. <laughs> well, I'm a dumb dumb. Like I said, it's been a while. Good enough. So, one of the downfalls to this tool is it really warps the metal after you cut it. And you got to kind of straighten the metal out a little bit. 
kind of distorts the metal a little bit. I don't use this tool enough where I'm real efficient with it, so I use it enough where I get it to work, and I guess at the end of the day, that's all that matters. A few taps with the hammer. And now, like I said, what I'll do is I'll double check it and see how far off I am. I know I have some work to do around the bottom where the masking tape was. I know I'm longer because I purposely went longer on that. So basically what I need to do is I have to remove the green. So any green that's there, I'll remove it. Careful I don't cut myself. This is 18 gauge steel so it's definitely a little thicker than working with 20 gauge. Guys, what I think I need to do, and girls, is I think I need to move that damn air compressor outside. I need to build a doghouse or something off the back of my shop and get that thing out of here because it's not helping me on YouTube. Alright, so my first test fit. How close I am. So I don't exactly know what I'm gonna do if I'm gonna cut these tabs off. I may just I may just drill some holes through them and spot weld and just overlap. It'll certainly make my life a lot easier. Alright, so I, I think I'm pretty good there. I need to figure out the exact angle of these pieces here. But what I want to do is make sure that they're at the right angle. So I'm going to get it off back up on the car. So you can see my line that I made. So what I did was I put an angle finder on the top of the firewall. So this was at 85 and a half degrees. Now the front of this here. This is now at 85 and a half degrees. So I know it's it's even. So from this corner here, down, it's a little over a quarter of an inch, about three-eighths of an inch. So I'm going to I'm gonna shear off three-eighths of an inch and then get this fitted back down. Actually, you know what? I'm going to bend it. I'm going to put it in my brake and bend it at three-eighths three of an inch on the bottom of that. Three-eighths. That was just a rough estimate by eyeball. You know. We're not getting too crazy technical here. We're just building a hot rod. Alright, can you see where I'm working? Alright. Alright, so my height is pretty good. There's actually a little bit of a, like some weld down. Oh, you know what? I need to bend this. I need to bend this over the hood latch pocket and that will shorten the piece also. So I need to measure up. Yeah, three inches will clear. So like I said, this, this one has to come up doesn't look easy. Three inches. Yeah, it's a little off. Much better. So I need to 
break this up. So I'm putting the long end in first because I wouldn't be able to break it. I may be able to break it with this 3 8 tab. Yeah, I could just barely get away with it because it's a drop behind the jaw. But it's just as easy to put the flat end in. gonna go I don't know what you'd guess that at maybe 10 degrees then I'm gonna do the same I could put an angle finder on it but again it's just real quick we're not building spaceships here just building hot rods so this this should be level at the at the angle I want. So there we have it. That's what I was trying to attempt. This is where the the latch pocket is for the hood latch and the spring mechanism. So it's going to go up and go around it. So that should have shrunken this down some. So. I'm expecting this thing to fit pretty good, minus some fine tuning details on the edges where, it, where the old metal was cut out and this one has to go in. So I'm going to bring my Sharpie. I can use that to mark my mark where I'm going to have to fine tune. All right, so let's see how it fits now. So, height-wise, I'm on the money. I need to do. I need to make some adjustments where that, where this sticks out here. This actually needs to roll up and meet with the bottom edge of the firewall, where it kind of zigzags. And now, what's going to happen is where I z this metal out, right here. This is actually gonna. It's actually gonna stick out, as you can see. It's actually going to stick out a little bit. So I'll just need to make some adjustments there. Round this edge back over. And I think I'm going to pull this firewall back out. And work on it on the table. Tighten you guys up. You need to bend this metal around because this metal needs to fit into, into this here. You see where it zigzags? It needs to more or less fit in there and wrap around and meet back up with this. In order to bend this metal, I'd have to, I had to uh, relieve it from this flange. So what I need to do, as I had said before, is to get, I think I need to drill some holes and get this, get this flange panel clecoed. To, it needs to go in a fair amount.
just a lot of figuring how I'm gonna shape this. Just a lot going on right here. All right, so as you can see, I got the back tack welded on. Is on the side of the firewall. What I need to do now is the reason why I needed to get that welded on was to be able to work to be able to work this lower corner so I can get this hammer and dolly and wrapped around this little area here. One little hole right there that clearly I didn't plan to do, but it'll be hidden away that you're never gonna see it. I'll just get this little piece put in there and call it a night. How's it going everybody? It's Mike up here in Middleborough, Mass with the Soldara. I'm gonna fix the camera a little bit, a little bit of an angle here. Kinda had some technical difficulties while filming the passenger side of the firewall. Ended up, for some reason, the audio wasn't working, so I have all the video. I mean, it's probably two, two hours, three hours worth of video. And like 11 or 12 segments, and there's no audio. I really can't use it, so what I'm going to do is... I'm going to show you where I left off after all that videotaping with no audio. I can at least show you what I got done. I'm going to take you over here and show you what I got done. Alright, so what you can see is I got all the metal cleaned off of the firewall on the passenger side. I got the wing built over here. Let me turn on the light so you can see it. I'm sure you can see it, but you might as well see it better. So you can see what I got done. Got all the metal cleaned off front and back. I got this wing built and fabricated for the passenger side. I did the same thing on the passenger side as I did on the drivers. The only thing I didn't do was down here where I did that 90 degree bend on top of the frame. I just cut it off straight. I'm actually going to do the same. I'm going to cut that flange off that I bent. I don't think I'm really going to need it. I'm going to mount the driver side of the firewall figure out exactly where I need to cut them both, cut them both down the middle, and then weld the two halves together. And then I'll have my entire firewall set. As long as everything's kind of where it needs to be, I'll probably leave it Clicoed in for now. I don't want to weld it in the event I have to remove it for some reason. But with the firewall Clicoed in, my next step is going to be to figure out the tow board. And in order to do that, open this door here, move the light over. So my next step is to work on the tow board. And I guess it would have been better to show you over on the passenger side. All right, so what I'm going to do is, when I ended up doing the passenger side, uh, the, the wing, 
the filler panel on the passenger side of the passenger side firewall instead of breaking it where I did I broke it and kind of came out and around the bump where the um, what do you call it the the hood latch mechanism sits or resides you know it had that pocket and that obviously bumped into the firewall area down the wings well I ended up doing this break here on this as you can see right here um, I didn't end up doing that on the passenger side because I ended up realizing that I really didn't need to I didn't need to go that extreme all I really needed to do was kind of shape this outer or this inner area to kind of bump it out so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take my hammer and I'm gonna flatten this back out if I can't get it to look like I want it to I'll just cut these spot welds off and just remove it and redo it I still have the template uh, it would be simple enough to just make another one if I have to so I'm gonna try to straighten that out real quick because like I said I just wasn't happy with it after I did the passenger side a lot of times that happens you do one you've and then you kind of fine-tune the second one or the third or the fourth and you typically evolve and you get better uh, and usually the second or third one typically come out better than the first one because you figure out the way to do it so that happened to be the case here on this side of the firewall so like I said I'm just gonna try to pound this flat um, it, sh it should go flat pretty easily and I'm gonna see how it looks and if I'm happy with it then I'll leave it if not like I said I'll just remove it so I'm gonna do that now but I'm gonna take you guys off the table because the camera bounces a lot when I'm pounding, pounding with the hammer. All right. Woo, going for a ride. I need a bigger shop. I don't have enough room for the cameras and the tripods and the wires and hoses and crap. There's just never enough room. Uh, let's see. Stretch it too much. Like hell. No one will probably ever see this. And yeah, I don't think I can really bend it out to get to the very inside. But I guess that being said, the inside actually needs to kind of come out, so. so that's pretty good. I think I'm gonna remove this 90 degree bend. Eh. you know what I'll leave it for now it's not hurting anything I'm gonna clean this all up like I did on the dry on the passenger side the back I'm gonna I'll sandblast the back it doesn't really make sense to try to clean it up when it's so pitted but I'm gonna clean up the front at least get rid of this this D this D nut this insert remove that and then um, yeah just kind of get it cleaned up and then I'm going to set it in the firewall and get these two pieces lined up. Figure out where my mark needs to be and then get these things cut. So I'm going to get this cleaned up.
go. <laughs> I got the TV going. And I gotta move that air compressor outside. It's too loud. Thing's still leaking. All right, so, boom. Got this all cleaned up. Obviously, I didn't do the back. Uh, like I had said before, I'll run that through my sandblast cabinet. But what I wanna do is, I want to get this set in place in the firewall, get it click code back in. Well, I probably won't be able to click code back in. Yeah, maybe I will. But then what I want to do is I want to make my line, figure out exactly where I need to cut both halves because they're going to overlap, like I said. So I want to get them to overlap, cut it straight down the middle, and then butt weld them together. That's what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'll get it all welded up tonight, but I at least want to get it to a point where it's kind of ready to go. So maybe then I can work on it this weekend. All right, so, oh, I'm falling all over the place here. So this will be the first time both tabs are in here with the wings on them. I think when I pounded this, hammered this flat, it pushed that wing out. See if I can get it to fit in a little better. What I'm going to need to do is, yeah, I'm off about an eighth of an inch for some reason. Because uh, typically this is behind. That's why. Putting it in the wrong hole. Why didn't you say something? Yeah, no, pop through. See if I can do it from the inside. You get a little better little view from the inside here. Minus a little bit of adjustment. Like the bottom got to get kicked out on the driver's side a little bit. Same as on, yeah, same on the passenger side. They gotta come, the bottom's gotta come out just a touch. But that's fine, I'll do that when it's time to weld it. This is my center mark right here. So what I'm hoping to do is where this bead comes up on both sides, when I cut this straight here, it should line up in, in a perfect world, it should meet up. You want to kind of try to keep that that line flowing and have right where it meets at the point should be right there in the middle of the firewall. So that should be where I need to cut it. I'm going to grab a square with a straight edge and make a mark down the center. It's about as close as I can get it, I think, with having them both in the car and overlapping. This one's going to be sit back a little bit further behind the firewall but it's the best you can do really. Like I said several times in the last video, this is it's just been a slow process. I'm just really trying to take my time to do it right because this is something that you're gonna see. And I think people will ask a lot of questions when they see it wanting to know what firewall it is and whatnot. So I wanna just make sure I try to do my best I can. Still working? Uh, it's National Pizza Week. Do we need pizza? Yeah, I think so. How'd you find out that? Heard it on the radio today. Is it National Pizza Week every week? I'm pretty sure every week's not National Pizza Week. Oh. But I think this one specifically actually is, even though I hate fake stupid holidays. Um, I think this is probably the best one there is. So, thought maybe. Stupid holidays because I don't even remember what day it is. Yeah, I know. Okie dokie, folks. So, made a mark. I made a mark on uh, this firewall, but what I want to do is I want to make a mark on the top of the bell housing. I just want to scribe it in real quick. What I'm going to do is when I cut this, I'm going to cut it about a sixteenth over the red line on each one. So when I get them fit in there, I can kind of get them to go in just a little bit further on these ends and get them to fit. I'm going to pull the driver's side out now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them just a little bit long. And that will give me a little bit of material to work with to be able to kind of fit it in nice and tight on the wings. The heck did I get it in there? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me.
the hell is going on? <sighs> A little bit of finesse, I guess, is all it takes. Alright. Alright. This one comes out easy because there's no steering column in the way. Let's get some tools. We get the show on the road. Oh, you know what? I'm going to get these off of here because they're not leather. But Dave's gloves are leather and they're awesome. My cutoff wheel. Where is it? What? What? Uh, it's not here. Oh, it's over, over there? No. I can't find my cutoff wheel. Did someone come here and steal my busted ass cutoff wheel? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I found it! Okay, you guys are all off the hook. I found it. Someone must have been in here doing work. Alright, so I'm going to cut this firewall. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> Alright, so now I just gotta see if I did it right. <laughs> it's kinda hard to get this thing sitting flat. Driver's side one actually hooks out a little bit. I'll grab a square and see. Yeah, it does. Either that or the top hook. Kind of hard to tell. Can't really get a square. <sighs> Which I don't know. That's the case, and they're both good. I'm going to go put them in the firewall or put them into the cowl and see how they line up. So that's the hole I'm trying to fill. Let's see how good or bad I did. You gotta trim a little off the bottom of this. So it just goes here. Taking a minute off. Try the driver's side. I feel like I'm not gonna get lucky and get this in the first time, the first try, but that's okay. I'm sure it could need some fine tuning. Like I said, I did cut them, I did cut them a little long. Yeah, you can already tell it's not gonna go. No, it's not gonna go. But at least I know I got a little bit of metal to work with, so that's at least pretty good. Alright, so I still have to trim these back just a touch. I did go over a little bit over my mark, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I went about a sixteenth of an inch over my red mark. So I'm actually going to cut it on the red mark and trim it back just a touch. So I can see if I can get these things to fit just a little bit better. But in order to do that, i got to pull it back out. Back over to the table. I already have the driver's side over here. I haven't cut it yet. I just brought it over. So I just wanted to 
start on the passenger side and work on this one first. Let me trim this one back just real quick and then I'll work on the driver's side. Get the driver's side fitted because there's more going on with the steering column and everything. It'll be easier to fit the passenger side than it will the driver's side. So, driver's side, get this fitted back in and see where I line up on the marks that I made on the cowl and on the bottom of the bell housing. Alright, so I'm on the money on the top mark. Still a little further, closer to the driver's side. Bottom mark. So worst case, I may have to just trim this down just a touch. But so far, it's looking pretty good. I'm pretty excited when I get this done. You can't go in from behind from the inside of the car on the driver's side. I added this piece next to the rear column, and truthfully, that's what's kind of screwing it. Another quick mark. Yeah, so the bottom, so clearly I was a little off. The top as well is just a touch off. See you guys soon. Thanks for following along. Appreciate it. I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. actually get this firewall out of here this time because yesterday as you saw I was struggling and it seems like every time I put the damn thing in here it gets harder to get out and I don't know why I can't take it out this way it's a conundrum <laughs>